Well, good morning, everyone. I'm going to say a few remarks, and then my Myanmar colleague will also say a few remarks. So as you know, on Tuesday, the Myanmar Armed Forces carried out its deadliest attack on civilians since the military overthrew Myanmar's democratically elected government two years ago. In Pazigi village in Saging region, local community members had gathered at a village hall where school children were performing and dancing. Fighter jets dropped bombs on that hall, followed by helicopters who opened fire on survivors and those who were trying to run away. 168 people have died so far, and that death toll is still rising, and among them are 38 children. The military doesn't deny this, They've admitted that they carried out the massacre. So the UK strongly condemns this cowardly attack on unarmed children and civilians. It is against international law and it is wholly indefensible. We believe the council should condemn it and demand a full implementation of Security Council Resolution 2669. It is concerning to us that the council has not been able to do so. For the UK's part, we'll continue to do all we can to hold the military regime to account for its oppression of the Myanmar people. We have already sanctioned 20 individuals and 29 entities targeting the military leadership and its access to weapons and military equipment. And we will continue to stand with the Myanmar people and we'll keep working to support their demands for democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Barbara. On 11 April 2023 is the another darkest day for the people of Myanmar. On that day, the inhumane military hunters' area bombings and MI-35 helicopter gunship on the villagers at the gathering in Basiji village in a dis in an discriminate and disproportionate manner. The air attack took place again in the evening when the search and emerge emergency activities were at the scene. According to the information that we received so far, the military's barbaric air attacks K-168 villages among them are 35 children as young as six month old baby and 27 women. The bodies of some victims were so badly burned and destroyed. Visual identification has not been possible. These heinous crimes of the military hunter clearly constitutes war crimes and crimes against humanity. And in, it is not the first one, and it is one of the many international crimes committed by the Inhumane Military Council. There were a total of 56 air attacks by the military hunter during January to March 2023, and there were 66 mass kills committed by the military since the illegal coup. These attacks showcase the hunter's escalating terror campaign against the Myanmar people, despite the repeated calls by the international community, including the UN Security Council. It, it clearly violated the UN Security Council Resolution 2669 which demands an immediate end to all forms of violence throughout the country. We thank Ambassador Woodward and her team for their efforts towards the issuance of a UN Security Council statement. On behalf of the people of Myanmar, I again call for the international community, especially UN Security Council, to take decisive actions to save lives of the people of Myanmar, to end the military impunity, and to prevent further destabilization of the region. I thank you. Ambassador, you mentioned uh, Resolution 2669, which largely has gone unimplemented. You are here calling for the Security Council to demand the implementation of a resolution that is essentially legally binding but ignored by the junta in, in Myanmar. What does that say about the authority of this council if you are here calling it for it to up, uphold its own resolutions? Well, 
as you saw, Resolution 2669 was a landmark resolution. It was the first time we'd had a resolution on the situation in Myanmar in the whole of the UN's history. So in that sense, it was very important that the Security Council came together with a clear vision, a clear statement of what needs to happen in Myanmar. We regret not only, uh, we regret that it has not been uh, implemented, uh, but we do call very robustly for it to be implemented. And we've been working very closely with our ASEAN partners who have today issued a statement uh, as well in order to try and ensure that the resolution can be implemented and that peace and stability and democracy can return to Myanmar. Ambassador, um, you have been unable to get any council statement on this. Please explain to us why. Who is blocking this in the Council and what are your thoughts on, on going forward? The, the, perhaps the ASEAN statement might change things. So I think the ASEAN statement uh, by the uh, presidency, by the ASEAN chair, uh, Indonesia, is a very important development. Um, we had unity uh, back in December when we agreed the resolution and we would very much like to get back to that point. Uh, it wasn't possible in the immediate aftermath of the massacre, but we will keep working uh, on that and hope that we can again find council unity, which would make for a strong uh, statement and condemnation of this appalling matter. We haven't yet got to unity, uh, so we're going to carry on working towards it. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, reveal all the council members' negotiating positions and concerns at this stage. you're using the words war crimes. What does, this say, what does this say about the credibility of the Security Council? Yeah, it is indeed, you know, it's a painful for the people of Myanmar because the people of Myanmar uh, wish to see the action response from the international community, in particular the Security Council, because we, we already have the resolution 2669 at least the member states or the, 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 all the relevant stakeholders need to comply with the, uh, the, uh, the resolution 2669. So the, the way that the, the military hunter uh, committed crimes against the people are very clear. That is the crimes against humanity. That is the war crimes against the people. The, these people are the one they're supposed to protect, but they are killing the people of Myanmar. So it is very painful. We need help. All the people of Myanmar are helpless, so that we need help from the international community. S strong and coordinated and decisive action from the international community is needed to save lives of the people of Myanmar. Thank you. Which, sorry, which steps, I mean, beyond the statement, which steps do you, from ASEAN group, which steps do you, would you like, um, whether other countries, but also specifically ASEAN group, that they are neighboring and they have more probably influence, which specific steps would you like them to, to take? Uh, thank, uh, thank you, because the, we, Myanmar, is a part of the family members of the ASEAN, so we value the role of ASEAN. So that is why we welcome and thank the ASEAN chair for issuing the statement uh, today. So, so ASEAN also, you know, its own uh, way of work. Uh, so, but we still need to, uh, to like to see the unifying action from the ASEAN as well. That is the unifying, that, that is because ASEAN already have the five point, five, five point consensus. But even though we welcome the, you know, five point consensus, but we also need to have the stronger position of ASEAN to find the sustainable solution in Myanmar. So ASEAN as a whole need to take the strong action. But ASEAN alone, what we on our view is, is it's, it's difficult to get the sustainable solution. So international community, role of international community is also important. So that is why the message that we always keep, uh, give is that don't leave ASEAN alone. So please, the international community should support the ASEAN with regard to the implementation of five-point consensus. Thank you. When diplomats talk about international community, often they're referring to specific countries that would have influence on, for example, the military junta in Myanmar. Are there specific countries you need to see action from here? No. But actually, you know, as Ambassador Barbara also mentioned, we like to see the unifying action from the 
Security Council. So that's the way we can find it. Of course, you know, sometimes if we can't get the uh, action, cannot get the action from the you know, UN Security Council, we we encourage the member states, like-minded countries, to come out with the coordinated action against the military. That is what we like to see. Thank you.